Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying this lovely Friday. Today, we're going to talk about electrical issues. Okay, we all know how this can be an absolute nightmare, especially when it involves communication issues between different vehicle modules. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you step by step on how to diagnose this uh, error code. And then I'm also going to walk you through that process as well as the programming and coding procedure. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. You guys, I hope you like it. We are talking about how to diagnose the U0140 replace program and configure configuring a BCM on a 2007 Chevy Silverado with the Maxisys Ultra. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent diagnostic consultant. I align people with the right tool strategy and give them the support and training you see on this presentation. So if you would like that, head on over to allteltech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation. Now, this is what you're gonna learn. You're gonna understand the necessary tools to perform the diagnostic and repair procedures. We're going to learn where the BCM is located on this vehicle and its crucial functions in the vehicle. We're going to define the U0140 error code and recognize its symptoms. We're going to analyze components and symbols on a wiring diagram for effective diagnostics. And then also we're going to follow step-by-step -step diagnostic procedures to diagnose, replace, and program a BCM module. What you're going to need for this is the Maxisys Ultra with a VCMI, your Windows laptop, and a body control module. All right. So, so to give you a bit of background, a customer reported that the engine would not crank or start. Additionally, the power door locks, windows, and keyless entry systems were non-functional. The fault code in the engine control module was a U0140, okay? The customer was unsure the correct approach to the diagnosis, the issue, and whether the Autel tool could configure the BCM after replacement, including whether programming or coding was necessary. So he looked for guidance and he reached out to me so I can walk him through the process, okay? So let's start off with the BCM. Let's learn about what this thing is in charge of. So the body control module interfaces with various subsystems in the vehicle, such as your analog brakes, cruise control, your horn, your HVAC, uh, lighting, power door locks. It's responsible for a lot of things, okay? And where you will find it, if you look under the... Uh, behind the knee bolster on the driver's side of the vehicle okay and this thing has a lot of uh, responsibilities so one is it serves as a communication hub between different vehicle systems it translates and routes data between the engine control unit transmission systems and safety modules ensuring that they, that they all can kind of talk with each other um, to effectively, which is, you know, important when you're doing, uh, you know, ensuring smooth vehicle operations. Next is, um, it's also a diagnostic communication interface. So the BCM can communicate with a scan tool like the Auto over what they call the GMLAN network. So this stands for General, Motor, General Motors Local Area Network. Now this communication protocol allows for system diagnostics in real time, monitoring the BCM's performance and health. Okay. Now the error code U zero one four zero stands is a lost communications with body control module. So this code is triggered when the engine control module and other control modules doesn't receive an expected message from the BCM over the CAN bus network, okay, within a specified time frame, And some of the possible reasons for this could be the following. One, it could be faulty wiring or loose connections in the CAN bus system. Uh, it could be a defective BCM or issues with other modules that communicate directly with the BCM 
which could lead to network disruptions, okay? So step number one, we are going to check a wiring diagram, okay? So if you look at the diagram, we need to identify some of our main components. So uh, the battery is an important component. We have our generator, our engine control unit, we have our cluster, we have our body control module, and we have our fuse block, okay? So the first thing that I would recommend doing is looking for the primary uh, power supply to the BCM, okay? So from the battery, the power is supplied to the B positive uh, line, which is, um, it's like a direct feed from the bat battery uh, positive terminal. So if you look here, okay, on the top, this is gonna go to our fuse block. Okay, now if you look at the fuse 48, this fuse protects the power supply circuit that leads to the BCM. So when we follow down this circuit right here, it travels via the 2848 circuit wire. It will go to the X4 connector and that's where the power will be distributed to the body control module and other various uh, uh, you know, connections. Um, the other thing we need to do is identify some of our ground. So this is our ground right here. When you see this, the G103, this is our ground on connector X4 pin number nine, okay? So now we have an idea of what we're working with in the power source. So that's the first thing we're going to uh, check. We need to verify the battery and charging system. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because ensuring a stable power supply is fundamental before uh, uh, before diagnosing communication issues. So we're going to check the battery voltage, you know, ensure your batteries fully charged. And we're going to use a multimeter uh, to check the voltage. And it should be around 12.6 volts with the engine off, 13.7 volts to 14.7 uh, volt, 0.7 volts with the engine running. Okay, we're going to inspect the alternator next and We're going to verify that the alternator is charging the battery correctly um, We need to check for any alternator charging issues that could uh, affect the power supply to the BCM and other modules All right Next we're going to inspect the fuses Okay, the reason why we want to do this is because a blown fuse can disrupt power supply to the BCM leading to communication failures, okay? So you can see here we have a, uh, a layout of where all of our fuses are. And we're going to use a test light or a multimeter to check for continuity, okay? Um, if you find any bad fuses, you need to replace any bone fuses and then we can go on to the next procedure which is check the power and grounds to the BCM. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because ensuring the BCM is receiving power and is properly grounded is crucial for its operation, okay? So we're going to look at a more detailed uh, diagram here. And if we locate the uh, connector, BCM connector X4, okay, you can see there, we're gonna locate pin number one on circuit 270, uh, 2740. So that's right here. Pin number two is on circuit 3040. Okay. Pin number three is 2940. Okay. And then pin number four is on circuit 2240. All right. And then our last one is uh, on pin number 10 on circuit 2840, okay? And if we look at the uh, BCM connector interface here, you can see where each pin is correlating to. This is our battery uh, positive voltage, one, two, three, four, okay? Uh, 10 is also another one. Another one we need to also take note is the ground, okay? And that's the next thing that we actually have to inspect, the ground. So if we look at connector X3, this is our ground, okay? It's on circuit 1851, okay? 
And then next to it on pin number five, the same circuit, 1851, we need to check those grounds. And then on connector X4, pin number nine, circuit uh, number 451, these are our grounds, okay? So if those things are okay, uh, we have a pinout, uh, we can see the connections here. Okay, one, um, what else we had? Five, okay, those were our grounds, okay? So next step is to inspect the CAN bus wiring, all right? So loose or corroded connections can, uh, at the BCM can lead to communication problems, all right? So this can be a visual inspection. Another inspection you can also do is with the uh, vehicle off, you can use a multimeter to check the resistance between uh, pin 6 and 14 around 60 ohms, okay? Now, this measurement checks the integrity of the CAN network, verifying that the main communication pathways are intact, okay? So you want an initial reading of 60 ohms, and anything below that, if it's like at 54 ohms, this could indicate a short circuit or another fault causing a lower than normal resistance. If it's like around 66 ohms, this could suggest an open circuit, poor connections or ex extended or damaged wiring, increasing resistance above normal, okay? Now, after that test is done, we're gonna inspect the BCM connecting uh, connections and harness. So loose or corroded connections at the BCM could lead to communication problems. So what we're going to do on this test is we're going to disconnect the BCM connectors, inspect for any damage or corrosion, and then we're going to clean the connectors if necessary and reconnect them securely. Okay. Now, once you if you've done all these tests and everything is okay, you probably have a bad BCM module. Okay, and that's when we need to replace it. Before we replace it, we need to find out what needs to be done with it after it has been installed. So, oh, the wiggle test too. Do the wiggle test. While monitoring the scan with the scan tool, gently wiggle the wiring harness and connect the connectors to see if the issue is intermittent. Okay, I almost forgot about that. All right, so once the BCM uh, is gonna be replaced, this is what we need to do. Anytime you replace the BCM on this VIN number, a new body control module must be programmed with the latest operating uh, software and vehicle calibrations. And the configuration procedure is the learning the restraints ID. So the function route on the Alta would go to the control unit, body control module, SCN setup, primary key, and BCM. Now, the reason why we need to do this follow-up procedure is because learning the restraints ID ensures that the BCM recognizes and correctly interacts with the SRS components like airbag sensors and seatbelt tension sensors, which might have a unique identifier or calibration setting, okay? So step number seven, replace and program the BCM, okay? So we're gonna load up the software, which I did for the client already, and we are going to uh, connect the vehicle and remember that you need your uh, battery maintainer when we're doing this. We're going to select the Maxi Flash VCMI. We're going to click continue and uh, we're going to ID the vehicle. Okay, it's an older vehicle, so I went to the SPS2 and uh, from there it was able to retrieve the VIN number which you'll see in a few seconds. Okay, so there's our VIN. And then since we uh, replaced the module, we're gonna go to replace and reprogram from the drop down, And then we're gonna go ahead and click the green icon on the bottom right to continue. Okay, and here we're gonna have a list of all of our control modules. We're gonna select the BCM programming and we're gonna click next. And then we're gonna get a prompt uh, if you would like to save this in our account. So once we do this procedure, that VIN number is gonna be stored in our AC Delco account so we can go to it later on if we need to for any other further type of programming without being charged, okay? Um, 
So while this is going, it's going to give us a selection to verify which vehicle it is. Okay. And we have um, different menus here. Um, the index is basically shows available calibration files for versions that you can select for programming. Um, the history is a log of previous calibrations uh, that you would select pertaining to your situation. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is the unrecognized calibration file. It's going to be um, updated to here and we're going to click start programming and uh, it's going to get the information from the server and then once it gets it downloaded from the server it's going to inject it into the body control module okay and it gives us the time frame right here this one didn't take that long let me see yeah, about four or five minutes okay so after that is complete we have our confirmation option. You can save this for your records as proof that you program. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next procedure, which is learning the restraints ID, okay? So we're gonna get the Autel, and we're gonna do our initial scan. You can see here the ECM uh, doesn't have any fault codes anymore. The client did tell me at this point that uh, there was this uh, uh, airbag light on or SRS light on in his car on the dash, okay? Um, so once we have this scan, oops, let me go back. Okay, you can see here we have uh, uh, an error code. So we're gonna go to the special functions, set up SCM primary key and BCM. And we're gonna let it do its thing. Primary key numbers are now configured, procedure complete. So let's go see if uh, we can delete the error code in the body control module now. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick erase. All right, we'll let it do its thing. Let me fast forward it for you guys. Okay, we still have some faults, but the BCM is now cleared. And the client confirmed that that um, airbag light or SRS light was off his dash. Okay. So there you have it, guys. We went from diagnosing all the way to programming and coding. Okay. So things to remember when you're diagnosing this error code, ensure the battery and power supply are stable. All right. Verify the battery is fully charged and check for any known blown fuses. Next, we're going to perform initial resistance tests. Check the resistance between pins 6 and 14 at the DLC with the key off, aiming for about 60 ohms, okay? Um, next, we're gonna check the BCM power and grounds, expect, uh, the power input and ground connections on the BCM for proper voltage and continuity. And then we're going to inspect the wiring and connections. Look for visible damage or corrosion in the wiring harness and BCM connections. And then lastly, we're going to program and set up the new BCM. Use the TechLine Connect software to program the new BCM and the Max Assist to really learn the restraint ID. Okay. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better with these wiring diagrams. It took me years to comprehend what I was looking at, but you know, when you help people with these diagnostic issues, it, it you kind of get a little bit better. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, I had fun with this one. And with that, uh, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.